So I went fishing yesterday, and this is exactly what happened because I think it's a perfect opportunity to talk about fall topwater baits. You guys know I love to flip. So I'm flipping this grass line, and it really, it happens when I'm flipping grass lines, when I'm flipping like wood, like you're going back in a creek and you're kind of pitching all those tree falls that are laying down with a jig or with the Texas rig and that. And I'm going on the line, and I catch a four pounder punching mats with a BB cricket. Ah. That's a big one. On the old BB cricket, boys. How about a five pounder to start the day? Look at that ball. I always know I caught a good one because Bog is posted up observing the live well, <laughs> going, Where's that fish at, bro? There you go. How about them apples, boys? All right, let's get him back in the grass where he belongs. There you go. Peace out. Go, go live down there. So immediately I'm like, This is sweet. I'm going to be on a punching bite. Well, I kept on going down the line. I got two more bites and I missed them both. They kind of swatted at it. I think they were pretty big. One of them I know was big. And it basically they grabbed the bait, they run five feet, and as I would go to set the hook, they would just come off. And it, it was really kind of weird. And oftentimes that indicates that maybe punching isn't exactly the right way to go. Maybe they're just a little more swatty. You need to catch them on some kind of trouble hook. So I'm going down this line though, and, and I look left and I see some balls of bait on the surface right off the grass line that I'm flipping. And the way you see them is they're like little dimples. Um, you see them kind of in a circle. It can be a foot wide, it can be five feet wide. I've seen bait balls that are like the size of a sidewalk, you know, gigantic. But I see them in a ball off the grass line and all of a sudden some fish come up and eat them. And I don't think they're bass, they're like skipjack and white bass. But immediately that indicates to me that the bait's there, there's other predatory fish that are there targeting that bait, and oftentimes that means that the bass are not far away, or they're right there and they're not even popping up. So lo and behold, I keep flipping, which I should have put the flipping stick down, like right off the bat, but I keep on flipping, and there's this giant sort of like cut inside the grass line where it goes in and makes a big pool, and dude, all of a sudden like two and three pound bass come and blow up, like all over this bait, and they're up, and then they're gone. I'm like, that was interesting. I need to go over there. So it's kind of a cool little process. I love to flip in that. So it's a way that I can kind of do something that I want to do, but I always keep an open mind and watch for this kind of behavior because more, more often than not in fall is when I see it. And like I said, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about top waters because what happened is the day transitioned from me flipping mats, fishing heavy cover to saying, hey, back off that grass line and start throwing your top water baits. And there's a few top water baits that, that I like when these fish are like this. A lot of times you're trying to mimic smaller bait. We talked about it in the fluke video, you know, when we're talking about throwing like a super fluke junior in that. Yes, you're gonna do that with top water, but you're also kind of getting a reaction so you can throw some bigger stuff. My main go-to top water um, in fall, especially if there's a little bit of chop in the water, is this smaller style pencil popper from Berkeley. I love this thing. I got some in early spring and here, check this out, dude. You can see how absolutely used that thing is. Do you see all the hook marks on the side from me walking it back and forth? What I like about this thing is the popping action from the mouth right there displaces a lot of water, but it keeps it somewhat still. Um, it's a walk the dog bait. I like that too. It seems like in fall, especially if your water temps are still above like say 60 or so, even upper 50s, that back and forth action really draws some bigger fish. You don't always get as many bites doing it. Uh, but if there's some chop on the water, that's the biggest trick. This thing displaces enough water with that, that popping mechanism where I think the fish can track it because there's this fine line with chop on the water where fish kind of I don't know, they lay off topwater lures. Not always, you know, if they're super tied up, if they're on a specific structure, you can throw just about anything. But when it comes to a search bait, especially with roaming around like schools of bait or roaming around bass chasing those bait, it's good to kind of make a bit of noise. And that's the guy I go to whenever I'm trying to do that. Real quick, because we're gonna talk about some more topwaters, but my setup is pretty simple. I got a braid, 40 pound braid, a 721 reel. This is a loose speed spool, any reel will work. Um, this is a Halo Rave 7 foot medium. It's a super parabolic 
I wouldn't call it a light rod, but it's a softer tipped rod with a lot of um, a lot of bend all the way through the rod. Because really, I never set the hook on a top water. I just kind of reel down and let the rod just sort of like load up. It's almost like crankbait fishing, but with a top water lure because you're still using those those treble hooks. Um, and as you can see, as usual, I have my little clip on there. I have that for the very fact of fall fishing pretty much i mean i like switching baits all times of the year but frankly during the summer you know a few different spooks you're pretty much good to go in fall it's a little trickier because these fish will key in on such small bait and they'll want sort of nuanced presentations but this pencil popper i am a huge fan of and then your classic spooks you know i have you guys saw in a video many months ago i think back in summer a one knocker What's nice with this guy is it's a little smaller than your standard spook, but it has that one knocker in it. It has a totally different sound than what you get from most spooks. Um, I don't have any more, but a Paychex Baked Repo Man, all of your spook style baits, and honestly, even though that bait is pretty small, I like throwing something a little bit bigger, because if you're gonna get a bite on a spook, I want it to be big, and it really I wanna call them up too. I wanna call up those bigger fish. now. On sort of the other side of that spectrum, if I know they're in a very small place, which they kind of were in this situation, and, and they're tight, and you need to sort of start big and sort of work your way down so you're matching the exact size of bait, you know, like a small little popper. This thing's probably like two and a quarter, two and a half inches. The other one that I really like is um, a Lucky Craft um, Gunfish, but not the regular size. It almost acts like that pencil popper but it's a lot more subtle. It, it has that smaller body presentation. It has a smaller popping head to it. It doesn't cast as far by any means, but when it comes to that, that smaller bait, it's a lot better at mimicking the way they're kind of flicking on, on the water surface and the way they're behaving. I can keep it in place really well too. I can literally walk this thing so it moves almost not forward whatsoever. You'll notice too, um, this isn't a ghost color. Most of my top waters are gonna be in sort of like a bone, kind of like whitish, like all white or pretty much a ghost color I keep it pretty simple um, with, with the top water stuff but one of the reasons I like throwing something along these lines this ghost with the more transparent look to it it sort of comes back to the baits really small I don't want them to really see the top water bait that much I, I really how, how would you put it I, I don't think they're so much hitting the bait even though yes they're eating the bait but they're eating the way it goes sploosh you know it's for top water, it's a lot about that report the bait gives and that, that sound and that water displacement that actually attracts the fish. So this is gonna pop really nicely. It's gonna displace water just like that pencil popper. Um, and I want them to sort of swipe at that sound. I want them to swipe at that. And a clearer bait, you know, if they're not seeing it as well, um, they're, they're gonna be more apt to hit it sort of in a, I don't know, close the deal style manner. Um, also with that smaller bait rolling around, they're not seeing the, the total size of this thing, but they can still locate it. Um, the other bait, and, and we'll talk about frogs in another video because that's going to be another thing. It's probably something that I should have done on these fish that I found. Um, last year I was fishing with my buddy Bass Quest, Caleb, and we were on, what was it, Nickajack. And basically we found one little grass line where there was a, it, it, literally the size of this table. I'm on like a six foot little folding table, a small little section of grass and they were right outside it. And there was 15 pounds of fish, like within six inches of that grass line, and we we're walking frogs off the corner of it, which is a lot like what we were doing in the little fish clips that I put in this video. There was pods of bait, and then there were pods of bass that were kind of swimming back and forth along these grass lines, and then grouping up to hit the bait. And it was a pretty cool deal. But the other one that I'll pick up, and it's especially if I'm around wood, um, it, it seems to be a big player around wood when they're doing the kind of exact same thing where they're sort of towards the edge of that wood or they're around a tree fall. Maybe they're around like one limb, all the baits like surrounding that limb and those fish are right below it. And that's just a small style buzz bait. Um, this is the, I believe the Jacob Wheeler one, but it's just a quarter ounce buzz bait. Um, Tackle HD makes one and I basically wrap braid around that skirt so it doesn't go anywhere but it's a downsized sort of micro buzz bait i throw it on the exact same setup that i throw my other top waters on it's just a seven foot medium rod i got 40 pound braid um, 
what's nice with this though is it, unlike say an open hook treble hook kind of presentation with a normal top water i can throw this thing around wood and sort of bonk it over the top and throw it like up in a tree and bring it back under a dock things along those lines so it's a little more four-wheel drive but the downside to it is that it's a, it's a moving continually style bait whereas with some of these other top waters what i can do is i can stop them like the the little popper or something along those lines i can literally throw that and just make it go blub and let it sit for a one one thousand count and kind of keep it in place but spook style baits um walking baits that's literally my first go-to i love that pencil popper because it gives me sort of a nice blend of both that sploosh as well as that walking presentation i can also fish it like fairly fast and cover some water with it the spots on the smallmouth like it too it's sort of a it's been like a hot ticket for me i i really like this thing it's i forget what it is the berkeley uh, I'll put a link to all the stuff that I'm talking about down in the description box of the video. But this guy is a bad mama jammer right there. That thing for, for fall and this time of year is it, pretty tough to beat. Um, the other one that I did not pick up that I probably should have thought about is a smaller version of a Whopper Plopper. Um, this is the Savage Gear one that I have. But basically, it's almost like a buzz bait with treble hooks. But that smaller version and then using like a transparent type presentation just like this, I think that's important too because they, they're literally hitting the sploosh. Like the sploosh is the most important part. But I, I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was an interesting experience. You go out there to kind of do one thing and it, it's definitely a viable technique that works this time of year, flipping mats. And you guys are going to see some videos of me flipping mats because I love to do it and I can catch some big ones doing it this time of year especially as that water cools down but I don't think we always remember that throwing like an open treble hook bait around some of this cover such as the grass you know there's a lot of strands of grass floating around there's grass that sticks up I can't tell you how many times I actually got grass like I would throw my bait into a little like hole like a pocket along that grass line that was opened up and I would literally after making say a 30 foot cast I would get three or four twitches in that hole and that's all I was going to get but I knew if I threw that hard bait if something blew up in it I went missing you know and like I knew that was kind of like a dialed in technique so I was willing to kind of risk fouling the bait after only two or three twitches to make that one cast and I think a lot of times guys get a little a little weird to throwing some of these open hook spook style open hook um, popper style baits that tight to the grass but it's no doubt a viable way to get bit and to catch some big ones this time of year as they focus on bait and that bait really moves towards the surface so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you got anything to add drop it down in the comments box i will go and put links to all the baits that we talked about in the description box so you can check them out at tiger warehouse if you like but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you are getting out to do some fall fishing we'll see you back out on the water or talking fishing right from the garage tight lines guys